everyone! So Crystal and I are here today to do the finally fall book tag. Um, we love autumn. It is the best time of year. It's definitely my it's favorite. It's time to get cozy and get some reading done. Now I know we did this tag last year, but I figure you can do it every year. <laughs> we love to celebrate autumn. <laughs> um, this tag was uh, originally done by Tall Tales, and I will leave a link to her channel down below if you want to check out her original video. So without further ado, there are 11 questions, so let's just jump in, shall we? Do the thing. Alright, so, number one is, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. So, one of my favorite reads this year, and one with a very vivid mm -hmm. setting, is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. I just loved so much about this book, and the... The setting and the atmosphere, it's just on a snowy mountain and their little warm little log cabin and huts. I just felt like I was there. Like everything mm -hmm. was really well described and because you didn't move around to so many locations, you really got to feel at home Yeah. and you stuck with, oh, I forget her name. That's terrible. Elin. You stuck with her pretty much the whole time. So you really got a feel of like being at home and it was just... It's just beautiful, like all the mm -hmm. snow and the forest and the trails. And did it make you want to go to Norway? It did. Go to the it fjords. made me want to like <laughs> make hot chocolate and be like, I wish it was snowing outside. But yes, this is my choice. Yes, that does have a good setting. The one I went with is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve mm -hmm. Honor. Um, this is set on a fictional island, but, and I believe like it's kind of like a Welsh island maybe, but it gave me so many Ireland vibes. <laughs> I used to live in Ireland and just like the rainy kind of foggy days and it just really brought that to mind like so much. It's just like this this island is almost like a character unto itself and it's just oh, I just like it made me want to be like curled up with a big woolly sweater and yes. walking across the Irish moors. <laughs> <laughs> and like the moors. Irish moors? It's Scottish moors. <laughs> There's moors. Uh, there's moors. Um, but I just, I just love the setting in this book. And this book itself is just beautiful, but it's just wonderful. The setting is perfect. I'm saving that for November. It's gonna be one of my November reads. Yep, I'm very excited. The first sentence of the book right. is, it's the first day of November, so today somebody will die. <laughs> dun, Maybe I'll dun, start dun. it on the second. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so uh, two is nature is beautiful, but also dying. <laughs> <laughs> Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. I almost couldn't bring myself to like revisit mm, this book, yeah. but I went with The Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Um, it's beautifully written. It's beautifully illustrated. It destroyed me. Um, the young boy in the story is dealing with the soon-to-be loss of his mom. I think she has cancer yeah. or something terminal, and he's just kind of like lashing out sometimes but he's visited in at night by this monster who uh is a great character in and to himself and there's just beautiful illustrations so throughout it and it's just such a beautiful like heart-wrenching story and like most of this was read read through like the blur of tears it was just but it's so precious have you seen the movie i don't have the emotional energy to watch it I <laughs> I'm, seen I'm waiting it until i'm like okay <laughs> I can handle this and then just cry all afternoon. For me, I just read this book very recently, and that is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a tough book. It was, I, I can't say I enjoyed reading it because it was like very, it's about a set of twins, a girl and a boy, and the girls, one of her very good friends, accuses her twin brother of raping her. And it's just, it's heavy. It's hard. It's a really tough, tough read, but I think it handles the subject in a very sensitive way and just kind of you just get to experience this girl's emotions of not only does she believe her friend, but trying to still come to the fact that she still loves her brother, mm -hmm. even though she believes her friend and he did this terrible thing and it's just it's a very, very tough read, <laughs> um, especially because they're twins, and it's just, yeah, hard to get through. I, I had, I, I, I didn't read it slowly necessarily, but for me, like, it did take me a few days to be like, okay, I need, I need to like put it down. And be like, <laughs> it's, it's like it's exhausting, okay. is what it is. But it is a fantastic book, and I do recommend it. It's just, 
you're gonna you just need to take time to process i think but yeah <laughs> also has a stunning cover yeah so does. beautiful i love it all right <laughs> so number three is fall is back to school season share a non-fiction book that taught you something new so i read a few non-fiction books this year but still my favorite um, is Caddyshack, The <laughs> Making of a Hollywood Cinderella Story. I just learned so much reading this, like the history of like that era of comedy and a lot of the things that I learned about the specific actors and the movie itself have like followed through on so many other conversations I've had since. Like I recently watched the movie about Doug Kenny right, that's right. on Netflix and like it was nice to like if I felt like part of the conversation, you know, like, right. I'm like, oh, I get that. And I listened to a podcast or something similar recently, or I read an article where I could like identify with like, oh, you were in that movie and that time and <laughs> that time of um, comedy. And I just understood so much more. And I Staying felt like I'm, I'm really glad I read this book because I feel it kind of connects with so many aspects of the things right. that I'm interested in and it was just and it was incredible I was I couldn't put it down I laughed I was like oh dear I'm like <laughs> it's great um I went with a kind of a unconventional pick and I picked Andre the Giant uh by The Life and Legend by Box Brown hmm, is that who it is? I'm not sure <laughs> um but I didn't know anything about Andre the Giant. I haven't seen Princess Bride. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> um, but this kind of, it's a, like, a graphic biography, and it's very simple about everything from his, uh, wrestling days, and I believe it also goes into his filming of, um, being an actor and his filming of Princess Bride, and it was just a delight. I really enjoyed it. It was very interesting. Um, it's blurred by Mick Foley and Mandy Patinkin, oh, <laughs> so, Mandy Patinkin. Uh, so you get the wrestler and the actor, but it's just, it was great, and like, it's just, the art style is so simple, it was so fast to get through, and after the giant, it was quite a fascinating human being. Yeah, I'm interested to watch, there's a documentary on HBO that I really want to get to, but I also might borrow that from you, yeah. because it sounds and looks really cool. It's great, so. Nice. It's another one. And so they, it's by, um. First Second, which is this graphic novel company that I'm really getting into lately. They have oh. some really, really good titles. But awesome. It's a fun book. So number four is, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, or friend group that you would like to be a part of. Mine's not very original, but oh. I want to be a Weasley. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> More fair. than you can imagine. I just absolutely love their whole family dynamic. I love the burrow and um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets has one of my all time favorite scenes in any Harry Potter book in it. And the first time I read it, I was laughing so loud. And it's when they, the garden gnomes, the garden gnomes. <laughs> I, I am obsessed with the garden gnome scene. And I think it's so funny. I love that she describes them as like these angry little potatoes. And, <laughs> Yeah, and just the whole, uh, to be a Weasley, yeah. it would just be I, so I great. That. She'd I be that. so loved. Um, my gut was to go with um, the ladies of 300 Foxway from The Raven Cycle, but I decided I might have done that last year. So <laughs> I decided to not do that. So I went with the group of friends from Percy Jackson. Oh, perfect. Um, so this is, you know, Percy and Annabeth and Nico and... Leo and Piper and Jade, and I just, I mean, I'm not a demigod, so, <laughs> so I'm not a hero, so I don't know if I would like actually keep up with them or not, but they were just like, it's like found family, and I love books that are like found family, yeah. so, and I love these characters, and I reread these books recently, and I just love them so much, and I think they're just amazing middle grade, and they're popular for a reason. So. Mm -hmm. Found family always so, is always so good because they're the ones you choose. Exactly. They're like, you know, you're my people. Exactly. <laughs> so fun. So fun. Okay. Now, question five. Uh, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. Mm -hmm. So we could we could do this. Yeah. With the book too. Let's uh I think I have a few that'll we're gonna spoil something. Get us here. through. Um, let's see and this one. <laughs> 
There, fall colored. So pretty. <laughs> My final choice. Oh, good. If you can get it. Get it. Give it to me. <laughs> I'm gonna go with a nice autumn colored Look at those golden books. stack. That'll so be right. autumnal. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, six is fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody else is telling a story. Well, that's a good one. I went for nice and obvious, but very good. And that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick, Patrick Rothfuss. Um, this is the story of Quoth, and in it, he is. A, he owns an inn and this guy chronicler comes along and wants to hear his life story. So basically each book in the series is one day of Quoth telling his life story to the other people in the, yep. the inn, the pub. It's so good. People, I am following a subreddit on Reddit dedicated to this and everybody's just like excited about the new book whenever that may be. And there's so many like conspiracy theories yeah. and guesses and stuff. and. I'm just like... I need to reread that. I just re-listened to the audiobooks in the past 12 months because they took forever. <laughs> but uh, I definitely recommend them. And I'm so glad I splurged on this beautiful anniversary edition. 10 years since that book came out. Mm. And for mine, I went with Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Um, I read this, I believe I read this for Spookathon last year. If not for Spookathon, around Spookathon. Um, and it was really good, and it's very different than what I thought Frankenstein would be. Interesting. He's telling the story, and he's on a boat. Oh. <laughs> that was going to be my question. I didn't realize it was a, a storytelling type story. Yeah, so he's telling the story to somebody. Um, but yeah, I. if you like classics, this is very accessible. Um, I thought it read very easily. It wasn't hmm. hard to get into, and... It's a perfect time of year to pick up Frankenstein, right? the original sci-fi. <laughs> so, yeah, so good. And it's it's also nice just like get the cultural references. Yes, <laughs> like that's what I found. Like when I read Dracula too, I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> like, yeah, Dracula was good. I read that in high school, but that's on my TBR as well. Yeah. I'd like to read more classics. Yeah, that's a nice spooky read. Perfect. All right. So seven is the nights are getting darker. Share a dark and creepy read. <laughs> So, the dark and creepy read I have to share and recommend, I'm not even finished reading because it's kind of that creepy. <laughs> and that, uh, I only have a digital copy so I hope it shows up, but that is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. It's very atmospheric, it's very, well as Joe Hill, it, it's very Stephen King, it mm -hmm. has that, that feel to it. Um, and I feel like it, Spielberg could make this movie if he like... Right. Took some dark potion for breakfast or something. But it's just so eerie and so but vibrant. Like you could picture yourself in this in this town, but I uh I had to put it down at some point last year, but I think I might re pick it up for Spookathon That's and uh, finish it because it's just oh, it's creepy. <laughs> um I also this is one I read recently, and that is The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. This was like really like to me like really freaky. <laughs> like this uh the killer in it like leaves a snowman behind which is like it's just so creepy <laughs> it's just so creepy and uh, there's some scenes in here that are like i was like oh, oh no oh no oh no it's i'm not like a horror person and this like almost was this was almost too scary for me um but i like had me on the edge of my seat it was very very creepy Maybe had to leave the lights on a little bit. <laughs> um, but apparently this is the eighth, I think the eighth book in a series oh, of, wow. with this detector, Harry Hole. Mm -hmm. Terrible name. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I'm interested to read more Joe Nesbo. I see why he's popular, but it was skimmy. <laughs> he's one of those authors that's on my, like, expand my mm -hmm. detective fiction list, and I really want to get into some of his stuff, because yeah. I've heard good things. Beware the falling snow. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so question eight is, the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. Well, <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> For me, that oh. is Bob by Wendy Mass and Rebecca Stead. Um, 
This book was nothing but heartwarming. It's the short little middle grade book. Um, I really want to pick up the finished copy because mm. the illustrations um, look so adorable. But yeah, a little story about this little creature named Bob. He wears this little outfit that makes him kind of look like a zombie. No, he looks like a chicken. <laughs> he, he thinks he's a zombie, but he's really just this magical creature who wants to go back to where he's from. So it's a, that kind of little Very adventure. Cute. Oh, I loved it. I read it one morning with hot chocolate and I was just like, this is Perfect. the best day I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. um, and I went with another one I've talked about a lot recently, <laughs> and that's The Storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. It's heartbreaking, but also heartwarming. Like, I just fell in love with this story. <laughs> so good. If you like books, you're gonna like this book. So, that's all there is to it. It's lovely. Yeah. Alright. Question nine. Fall returns every year. <laughs> Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. So, um, I had a different book picked out, but it was kind of gigantic and I didn't want to bring it. So I decided on Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Mm. It just so happens that I do read this book once a year. Oh. Like it just, like I'll pick it up from my shelf and just be like, oh, and then suddenly I'm like a hundred <laughs> pages in and I'm like, well, I guess I'm reading this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and just thinking of it for this list, I will probably pick it up sometime soon and just revisit because I just love it so much. So good. It makes me happy. So good. And I went with one, um, is a book I've only read once, but I really, really want to reread it so I can get to A Torch Against the Night, which is the third book in the series that came out recently. So I want to reread An Ember in the Ashes, which I loved when I read it, and I feel like reading it a second time, because I feel like I've just forgotten so many details that I'm going to love it even more the second time around. So I'm, this one is going to be one that I'm hopefully going to pick up next month, because I really want to get back into this world soon, and Sao Tahir just creates these amazing characters, and it's so good. It's like, it looks mm -hmm. long and chunky, but you fly through these yeah. books. That whole series, I feel like I'm missing out. That whole series is on my TBR, but yeah. I've heard nothing but like you and Karina love it, and I've heard nothing but great things on like Instagram and stuff. Yes, it's a good one. I have to get to them. It's a good one. All right, and now, 10, so this is the final question. Fall is a perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessory. <laughs> well, this is gonna sound like a plug, but. <laughs> I treated myself for my birthday last year to a book bow bean, and it's the best thing to <laughs> curl up and read with. You just fit right in it on your couch. It's nice on your lap, so you're nice and comfy, and it's just, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I'm just, even my boyfriend's obsessed with it. He's like, where's the bean? I want the bean. <laughs> like, yeah, so. It's, very it's nice and soft and cushy. And I went with our Harry Potter mugs. So... My go-to was this one, <laughs> but now I have a second one. How does I one can... choose? How do I choose? I'm really afraid of breaking these mugs because we don't have any more. Like we can't yeah. even get more. So <laughs> these gone, these mugs are like, like I'm so scared. So They're one like, of a kind. <laughs> I started using this one as like a bookmark holder. Because, oh, cute. Uh, because I'm like, I don't want to break it and I'm clumsy. Mm -hmm. So I might, this might be my new drinking, but. My forest mug is on our like kitchen coffee bar and it holds like, you know, knitted mm, like yeah. coffee sleeves, like coffee cozy sleeves. And my Azkaban one is still in the box because I'm terrified I'm going to break it. Yeah, but they're so I think lovely. Day. And I like to curl up with some tea or some hot chocolate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, they're also good for soup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> soup mug. Yeah. That's mine. All right, so that was the finally fall book tag. We hope you enjoyed it. If you do this uh, tag, please let us know down in the comments because mm -hmm. this is a fun one to watch and I do yes. like going back and watching other people's as well. <laughs> um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye, Bye guys.